good evening everyone so my topic for a uh, next video is morphine poisoning that is opioid poisoning i'm going to discuss with you morphine poisoning and i want to request you if this video appears helpful to you and it is knowledgeable to you kindly subscribe to my youtube channel that is dr nitika hans pharmacology discussion now morphine poisoning Now, morphine, clinical overdosage, uh, accidental overdosage, suicidal, or seen in drug users. Now, morphine poisoning, it can be due to as thing morphine is the stronger analgesic drug. So, it can be used in, to treat very uh, strong pain in the body like cancer pain or pain of myocardial infarction. So, clinical overdosage can occur, accidental overdosage can occur. The patient can take more morphine in to uh, produce analgesia, or it can be suicidal, or it can be used in taken in drug addicts like tramadol or heroin injections are available and tablets, capsules are available. So drug users to take the morphine, the opioids, and thus that can lead to poisoning. Occasional delayed toxicity can be due to injection of an opioid into the chill skill areas. There can be delayed toxicity. Now, there's injection of the uh, opioid into the chilled skin areas or in patients with low blood pressure and shock. Is now the patients who are having low blood pressure or who are having shock. So that can lead to occasional delayed toxicity. The drug is not fully absorbed and therefore a subsequent dose may be given. And thus, when normal circulation is distorted and an excessive amount may be absorbed suddenly. This is occasional delayed toxicity, means that firstly the drug is not absorbed. So uh, when it is not fully absorbed, a subsequent dose is given and then the uh, normal circulation gets distorted, then excessive amount may be absorbed suddenly. Now it is difficult to find the exact amount of an opioid that is toxic or lethal to humans. Means we cannot uh, uh, tell about the exact amount of the opioid which is lethal, means which is which can kill the patient or which is toxic to the patient. Literature suggests that in case of morphine, the normal opioid pain-free opioid nave pain-free result is not likely to die after oral doses less than 120 milligram or to have serious toxicity with less than 30 milligram per entity. Now in case of morphine, now pain-free adult, now patient who is not having the pain, uh, it is not likely to die the oral doses with the, uh, the less than 120 and serious toxicity with less than 30 milligram per entity. Lethal dose is about 250 milligram. This was the dose of the morphine. It was 250 milligram, which is the lethal dose. Now, symptoms and diagnosis. Symptoms will be that it is uh, basically the symptoms of the morphine poisoning will be the actions of morphine poisoning. Means what are the actions of morphine poisoning, which is uh, known by the mnemonic sacrum. Sacrum as for sedation, it depresses the CNS. So there will be a sedation scene in the poisoning uh, and there can be suppression of the uh, central nervous system, depression, that can lead to sedation. E is for analgesia, it can produce analgesia. And C is for constipation, this morphine poisoning, it is known to cause constipation because it decreases the GI mortality. And uh, R is for respiratory depression, it depresses the respiration, so that can lead to, ultimately it can lead to death. U is for euphoria. It will produce euphoria in the patients who are taking the morphine in large amounts. And M is for meiosis, that is pinpoint pupil, which is a hallmark feature of the morphine poisoning. So the patient is tuberous, and when there is sedation, uh, the overdosage can lead to basically sedation can lead to coma, ultimately coma. So there is profound coma, respiratory rate is low, respiratory depression may occur and patient may be apneic or patient may be cyanosed. There is bluish discoloration of the skin can occur or loss of breathing can occur. A respiratory exchange decreases, blood pressure falls. Respiratory depression also occurs and hypotension also occurs. 
and if adequate oxygenation is restored early the blood pressure will improve means if in the treatment we restore the adequate respiration so uh, adequate oxygenation so the blood pressure will improve if hypoxia persists there is capillary damage and patient goes in shock and if there is loss of oxygen hypoxia occurs due to respiratory depression that can lead to that the patient can lead to it can lead to capillary damage and the patient can go to shock also the pupils meiosis will be there pupils will be pinpointed and dilated in severe hypoxia urine formation will be it will cause urinary retention so in urinary retention will take place urine formation will be depressed body temperature will fall there will be cold extremities cold clammy skin and skeletal muscles they are flaccid the jaws is relaxed and tongue will fall back and block the airway the skeletal muscles are flaccid they are very uh, relaxed and very less muscle muscle movements takes place reaching and fasciculations jaw is relaxed and tongue may fall back and block the airway frank convulsions so if there is a withdrawal symptoms may occur Uh, with the poisoning, then it can lead to convulsions, leading to stimulation of the CNS, leading to convulsions, which are seen in children. Death is basically due to the respiratory failure, and if respiration is stopped, death may occur due to other complications like coma, pneumonia, or shock. And non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema can also be uh, can also occur due to morphine, methadone, propoxyphene, and pure heroin. Means there can be non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema, respiratory failure, coma, pneumonia, shock, which are the main causes of death in patient of morphine poisoning. Now, what is the triad of a uh, uh, triad features signs of the morphine poisoning? Is there will be coma in patient, pinpoint pupils, and depressed respiration, feeling of needle marks, suggestive of addiction. Is if there is a um, feeling of needle marks on the finding of needle marks on the skin is there on the arms or in the hands, which will um, which are suggestive of addiction. It supports the diagnosis that is that is the morphine poisoning. Examination of the urine and gastric contents for drugs may aid in diagnosis. Means we can uh, see the presence of opium in the urine and in the gastric contents. But the results they become available too late to influence the treatment. Treatment first step is to uh, establish a patent airway and ventilation. Opioid antagonist post pressure ventilation uh, can be given, and oxygenation can be given, and then the naloxone, which is the antagonist of opioid. It produces reversal of respiratory depression. Means there will be tachypnea in case of the respiratory depression. Care should be taken to avoid precipitating. And withdrawal is dependent in dependent patients who are extremely sensitive to antagonists. There can be withdrawal in the dependent patients. And dilute naloxone 0.4 milligram and slowly administer IV monitoring, arousal and respiratory. Function. If no response is seen with the first dose, give additional dose. In children, a dose of naloxone is 0.01 milligram per kg. The dose is 0.4 milligram IV, and in children, it is 0.01 milligram per kg. Now observe for rebound in these and sympathetic activity. Now in morphine poisoning or in morphine addiction, uh, it can be of two types: that is short term and long term. And in the short term addiction, when the patient is taking the drug for a shorter period of time, that is for days or for weeks, the patient is taking, there will be on stopping of the drug of morphine or heroin, there will be a sympathetic stimulation because there will be emergency condition developed in the body on stopping the drug, so that can lead to sympathetic stimulation. That can be treated by beta blockers, and uh, um, a failure of breaks will be there by the clonidine alpha to adrenergic agonistic drug. Sympathetic stimulation can also lead to cardiac arrhythmias and pulmonary edema. 
pulmonary edema is contracted by posture pressure less patients and the treatment of edema should be there and the when the this tumulation of the um, cns takes place that can lead to seizures which can be uh, treated by the dizepam or by naloxone iv fluids vasoconstrictors can be given to maintain the pp in temporary stimulation because in temporary stimulation there will be arrhythmias palpitations increased heart rate tachycardia all these symptoms will be there so we can give the iv fluids or vasoconstrictors to maintain the bp which is hypotension is there in the patient and gastric lavage with potassium permanganate even when drug is injected as being basic drug it is partition to gastric juice ionizes there and does not diffuse back into the blood means even when the patient drug is injected Uh, a part of it it reaches the stomach also and it is the basic in nature and the stomach content is uh, acidic so it will be ionized there and it will not diffuse back into the blood the presence of general cns depressants does not prevent the sedative effect of naloxone and antagonize the present action of sedative narcotics Duration of action of antagonists is shorter than that of many opioids, hence patients can slip back into coma. They can go go into coma, and fatalities occur due to premature discontinuation of the naloxone. Continuous infusion of naloxone should be considered. Toxicity due to overdose of pentazosin or other opioids with mixed actions may require higher doses of naloxone. Means higher doses may be required. If the toxicity due to overdose of pentazosin occurs, now morphine addiction it can be of two types. Have already told you short term or long term. In short term, the treatment is that we have to. Ah, uh, what are the uh, two types? Is first symptoms will be due to sympathetic stimulation. That is, there will be tachycardia, palpitations, ah, uh, arrhythmias, tachycardia, heart rate increased, and other. other signs and symptoms of sympathetic stimulation will come and uh, along with it the uh, withdrawal symptoms may also come with it if we stop the drug and the withdrawal symptoms will be opposite to the action of the morphine or other opioids like in place of sedation there will be convulsions seen because of the cns stimulation in place of the constipation we will see diarrhea in place of the respiratory depression there will be tachypnea in place of the euphoria the patient will not be euphoric the patient will be calm and uh, in place of the miosis we will see midriasis this is the withdrawal symptoms will come and to treat those withdrawal symptoms uh, we give the drug methadone which is longer acting drug and uh, it uh, it takes for a longer period of time and it suppresses the withdrawal symptoms methadone and uh, for the sympathetic stimulation we can give beta blockers and clonidine and uh, withdrawal symptoms are controlled by methadone to control a long term addiction firstly methadone is given long term addiction is when there is a, a patient is taking for months or years and then we can we have cannot stop the drug we have to give the last a long term uh, treatment with methadone and so it will uh, lead to less withdrawal symptoms and uh, afterwards to prevent the relapse we can give the opioid antagonist that is naltrexone which blocks the euphoria and ultimately the patient stops taking morphine of which is tapered for 2 to 3 weeks uh, the doses is decreased slowly slowly and ultimately naltrexone is stopped and also the patient becomes free from the opioid poisoning also thank you that's all for morphine poisoning and if you have understood my lecture kindly subscribe to my youtube channel dr nitika hans pharmacology discussion thank you happy learning be happy stay safe
बी हेल्दी थैंक यू